Yeah, I think you can't really ever prepare for either of those things you've just spoken about personally and publicly. You can't really ever prepare for them, but you kind of just learn how to manage it, don't you? You learn how to sort of manage that situation a little better. I mean, do you have any tips or tricks or anything that you go to where you say, okay, this is how I'm going to address these situations now because I know that that's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just looking after myself better by doing it that way. Yeah, I mean, look, I think I think it's twofold. I think it is always trying to remind yourself it's a marathon, not a sprint. Although when you're in the more startup phase, it, it kind of is a sprint. And, you know, the problems could send you bust tomorrow. So there's an immediacy that's quite hard to remind to, to calm down with. Um, but yes, it's, I think it's really trying to remind yourself of that and be quite disciplined with your wellness and self-care practices because it is so important and you know so I really try and get out before my kids and have time to meditate I batch cook I prep ahead so that on these super busy days where you don't have time for anything you've got food that gives you the energy that you need to feel good to to keep going forward and I find that really really important really prioritizing sleep um, but again, like you can't be all things to all people. You can't do everything in any chapter of your life. And I think you have to be honest about what you can do in any given time. And, and for me right now, that's work. My children, honestly, before having children in the startup phase, it was work and work and yeah. your life really, really shrinks. And that's, you know, the, there's a trade off. There's always a trade off in life. Everything's a compromise. Um, and the amount of kind of purpose and mission that I have with what we do. And I realized I like, one of my core values um, is making a difference. I think it's one of the things that's the most important to me in my life. And so it, it gives me that, but that's why I'm always so keen to say, and I guess that's that would be the advice part of this is, I think if you start a company because you want to make a lot of money because you want to sell it, you're going to be in for a difficult ride because you've got to pick yourself up off the floor time and time and time again. And you've got to find a reason and motivation to get through really, really hard patches because they're inevitable. No one succeeds without failing multiple times along the way. And so knowing why you're doing it and why does it matter beyond you, I think is really, really important. And I just don't think I would still be here today. I don't think the company would be where it was if it wasn't embedded in something that was not just us. That's really interesting. So what is it that, so when the chips are down and you're literally face first on the floor, juggling children and kids and work life and everything else, what is it that just keeps you going? I've got to, you know, I've got this. I can, I can just soldier on. It's just this, it's the why it's the stories from other people of how much delicious Ciela has helped them. Um, whether that's the recipes, the book, the app, the products, and that it's helping them change the way they eat and the massive ramifications that that's had on their lives. There's so many messages like that every single day. And each time you read one, you're like, right, I need to get this to more people. We need to have a bigger impact. This needs to go way wider. And so it does, it creates this like adrenaline filled push forward, which feels so, so, so good. And I think that's what I mean. Like if you're not trying to do something or solve something that's not just about you I think finding the the why is really difficult did you feel like you were met with some I feel like you're ahead of your time and did you feel like you were met with some skepticism when you first brought this conversation to the sort of public arena because it feels like we're now having many different conversations about gut health that we weren't having 10 years ago and gut health has become a thing that now everybody seems to know about that wasn't the case sort of 10 years ago so I feel like you're ahead of the curve on that and and is that something that it's been a bit difficult or a struggle to convey to people who weren't early adopters way back when, because now everyone's listening and everyone's hearing. Yeah, which feels so good. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a great moment. It's exciting. Um, but yes, I mean, gosh, when I first started doing this, people were like, so wait a second, you're telling me that what I eat actually has any impact on my health. Yeah. Um, and you know, there was this like, you are not what you eat. You, we kind of are what we eat. And, you know, look, there's no such thing as one singular bad food. There is not one singular bad mouthful is about, a, you know, a less healthy and healthy diet. Um, you know, but I caveat that with this conversation around, you've got to find balance. You do have to find balance. It's not hundred percent or nothing, but our flip is not right. You know, almost two thirds of our calories come from ultra processed food. Only a third of us managed to get our five a day. 
you know, arguably it should be higher than that anyway. We're getting barely more than half the fiber we need. As you said, those things are so important for our gut health, which we know is so important for both our physical and our mental health. And the list goes on as to why it's so important. But so we do need to reverse things. We do we have the wrong we have the wrong ratio going on of unhealthy ultra processed food and non food ingredients to healthy whole food ingredients. And and that's why I want to switch. But yes, when I started, people were like, this is weird. You think it really is good for us to eat carrots. And now I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we even had this conversation. Like it's it's um, extraordinary in some ways, but it's so exciting to now be in a landscape of which I think the conversation to me has switched from, it's no longer, doesn't matter what we eat. What should we be eating? Because we've answered that with yes, unequivocally, it matters for our health, what we eat. And we should be eating a largely whole food plant rich diet. We know that, you know, un, our um, health related um, diseases now cost in the NHS up to 100 billion. Like we have a humongous health crisis linked to this. So we know what we need to be doing. Um, oh, no. Oh, my. <laughs> As I'm cute. It's a work life balance. <laughs> Oh, hello, <laughs> cutie bum. Hey, May. I just. Hi, how are you? I just nursery need... fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are so May, hungry? if I finish this really quickly, go out to the office, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so we can go out together, okay? <laughs> <laughs> So I, love that, I love that the office we'll is met with such cheers <laughs> I know she's so excited I often had to go on a play day with her friend she said she'd rather go to the office <laughs> um, so do you want to have your lunch pop it and then we'll go together to the office okay once you've had your lunch yeah okay so I'll meet you at your lunch downstairs yeah that's my water okay I love you now and then we'll be together all day okay I promise <laughs> All day, mommy. okay, all day. So you have your lunch, and then we'll be together all day. Sorry, <laughs> it sounds they look just like my little ones. Love you. <laughs> I'm oh, so cute. Sorry. Cute. No, it's fine. Look, it's just normal life. That's just real life, isn't it? I mean, that's. I mean, one totally. of the things that COVID taught us was that kids are going to come in and out of your camera shot all day, every day, regardless of what meetings you you've got on. It's very, very true. Um, oh, but what I'm saying, sorry, to go back is exactly <laughs> that. There was this extraordinary scepticism that's kind of hard to figure out. And, and I think the question has moved from what should we eat to how do we make it possible for people? Because the wanting to eat well, knowing it's important to switch your diet towards this more whole food plant-based approach. And I'm not saying 100% plant-based. I'm just saying it's rooted in plants and whole food ingredients. Um, Actually doing that is almost impossible because the reason we eat almost two thirds of our calories from ultra processed food and our kids in this country now eat more ultra processed food than any other children in the world, even more than the US, which is a really depressing statistic. Um, it's not going to happen if we don't make it easier for people. And ultimately, at the moment, when you're on the go and you go and get a meal deal or you walk into a supermarket, so much of what you are met with and often what is very cheap calories is ultra processed food. So that's the that's the challenge now, I think. The first challenge was getting people on board with the realization that what you eat has a massive impact on your health, on your energy, on how you feel every day, and, and even on things like your mood. But now the question is, how do we actually make it plausible for people, and particularly in the world we live in, where people are just so, so, so busy? And I guess your question, like, what drives you? It's this, it's that it 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 feels so pressing, it feels so urgent, it feels so important to help be part of a U-turn in the way that this country approaches their health um, and their food. And that feels so exciting and so motivating. So even on a day where you're knackered and there's so much going on, when you come back to why you're doing it, you're like, no, I'm really, I'm actually really fired up still. I also think it's about habits, isn't it? Like we all know this. We all love a routine. Even when we were babies, we loved a routine. Like you respond to it, don't you, really well. And now I just think, we we love we love a routine and forming those good healthy habits can set the tone for everything. I don't know about you, but I feel like if I do something right at the beginning of the day, the rest of my day pans out really so much better than it ever would have done had I made a really bad choice early. 
there's um there's a lot of evidence behind that which is so interesting and that's what i like really would always suggest to people if you want to improve your health start slowly mm. like one percent closer to your goal every day don't sit down and be like right i'm going to change everything today ask yourself what is the one thing i'm going to do today to feel better maybe it's cook a stir fry in 15 minutes after work Maybe it's going to walk on your lunch break and listen to a podcast that inspires you for 20 minutes. You know, maybe it's doing like five minutes of breath work. Like it doesn't need to be and just one of those, by the way, not all of them, just one. And just let those habits add up. But what it also shows as well, we know, is that often these all or nothing approaches, they don't work. It's why almost 90 percent of diets fail. It's just too extreme. It's not sustainable. Um, whereas this like habit stacking, this small you know, small habits adding up this positive cycle. There's really interesting research behind it that when you say wake up in the morning and you do one thing that makes you feel better, that really helps create a positive cycle to kind of inspire you and empower you to make the next habit choice. Okay, so my question to you is, what's the one thing you do every morning that makes you make good habit choices throughout the rest of the day? So look, it doesn't happen every day. Um, so I like the I like the expression daily ish, which is like, you know, it's most days, but no, you know, not overly pressurizing yourself, depending what else is going on. Like maybe I've been up all night with the kids, in which case it's not gonna happen. Um, but I, I try and do 10 to 15 minutes of meditation every single morning. So it's the first thing I do when I wake up. So we, I don't go on my phone. I turn on a meditation, I do a guided meditation, and then I'll go down, get some coffee and sit and silently quietly listen to music drink coffee read the paper but it's like a 30 minute routine but then I'll get showered and get dressed and stuff but it just means by the time the day unfolds and I've got my kids shouting what's for breakfast I'm hungry and then my emails pinging and you know all sorts of crises unfolding as they do at work um I'm like calm and ready what time do you set your alarm for I try not to set an alarm um, and just try and have this where I get up at the same time each day. And it's, yeah, like 5.45 or so. It's a lot easier now that I more naturally wake up at that time versus setting an alarm. Um, But yeah, around 5.45. Yeah, that's the same time I get up because I like to get up a little bit before the kiddos so that I just feel like you've just said centered before everything goes completely to pot, which it will, you know, inevitably before the school run. Exactly. And then I just try and do small things like the night before I'll just do like a prep ahead porridge. It takes me three minutes. You know, I'm going to do that tonight. It's not a big ordeal. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, But just put into a bowl, you know, some oats and you might be a bit more creative than you would be in the morning when you're flustered. You might add some walnuts, some, you know, et cetera, grated apple in there, like a nice way to get different fruits and veg and nuts and seeds and some nut butter. You just stir it all up with some milk, pop it in the fridge. And then in the morning, you could just eat it as overnight oats, or you can just heat it up and it will take you one minute. But there's no mess because you've already got all the stuff out of the cupboards and you've put it back. And so, the, and again, it's just like, it makes it easy to make the healthy habit choice. Whereas when you're like, you feel like you're always on the back foot, it's really difficult. And like, I do say that to people, I think there is a, a boring element of looking after yourself, which is like being a bit prepared. So having those ingredients in the cupboard, being willing to put five minutes into making something you know batch cooking like I'm obsessed with batch cooking every Sunday night (laughs) I will make something for us as a family and I'll just make like three times as much of it and then you know we say cook once eat twice but I reckon we eat like four times from it throughout (laughs) the week I just make so much because then there's always things and I get home you know or today like I'm gonna have two minutes for lunch today but I've got stuff in the fridge and so I'll have something that's yummy and that's filling and that makes me feel good and gives me energy for the rest of the day. And I'm not going to have to do anything to, to actually get that. Whereas all I had to do on Sunday is cut an extra onion. You know, it's not like <laughs> it might have added three or four minutes, <laughs> given the volume of which I like to batch cook to my to my Sunday. But it's it's no more effort than that. But then throughout the week, you just have these easy unlockers. Have you got a guilty pleasure? So I, and I don't mean this in a rude way, I hate the expression guilty pleasure because for me it summarizes everything that's wrong with the way that we look at food and yeah. so, that's why I mean I don't mean it in a rude way but I just I feel like it not even dark chocolate <laughs> yeah if it is through everything that's wrong with our culture because as I said like you know balance isn't having two-thirds of your calorie from ultra 
our calories from ultra processed food balances eating a mostly healthy diet mm. but then you're adding into it what you want to when you want to you know you're out with friends you're on holiday you're having a great evening like that's great but it's not something to make you feel guilty and that's the problem with it is it's like it's this weird diet culture entrenched views where we have this very binary on a bandwagon off a bandwagon all or nothing extreme approach and I, I just feel like the idea of a guilty pleasure sits in that because if it's making you feel guilty it is not a pleasure that is an oxymoron so it's I just think you know yeah we need to eat more greens and we should be trying to get our five a day and we need to learn to cook beans really well and make our lentils really crispy and, and batch cook so it's possible to eat well in the week but no one's saying you can't then go out on a Friday night have three margaritas with your friends but <laughs> please don't feel guilty for doing that. And by the way, when you do that, you don't need to work up on a Saturday and be like, all that hard work's out the window. There's no point eating well today Um, because that's not how it works. It's small habits continuously for life. Um, So I feel really strongly on that one because I think there's so many people who have this quite like yo-yo dieting, diet culture very entrenched in them where it is like I'm doing this plan I'm not doing this plan I fell off the bandwagon and the bandwagon set such an impossibly high almost impossible to reach expectations of people um but then yeah then you you have a donut you have a you know whatever it is and you don't enjoy any of it you're like this is bad um <laughs> in which case like what's the point I feel like you've given us a thousand, but because it's called the Performance People Podcast, I'm going to ask you just for one. If there was one thing that you could say to people to just improve their performance, like you've said, just even by a little percentage, what would it be every day? Gosh, there is just, <laughs> yes, there's so much. I don't, hard to know where to start. I guess, I guess there's there's two, um, but I'm not sure I think I'm allowed to do that. I think there's so many different ways of looking at the way you work. And I think things like learning to internalize solutions and realize that you are the only person that can solve your problems is really important, albeit a very difficult learning and being ready for the fact that it will never be plain sailing. The second you think it's plain sailing, the next day will be a disaster. And so almost like to be ready for the long haul, there are no magic answers. Nothing will fix your business or transform it in a moment. And or likewise, nothing has to destroy it in a moment. Like most things aren't as good as, or bad as they seem if you can internalize that and really internalize the solution and know that you will forever be pulling magic rabbits out of magic hats because that's your job. Um, and it's really difficult and it's really lonely, but it's so rewarding. But I think, you know, that I'm sure you get lots of tips on that sort of thing. So I guess more in my remit would be that you are in for a marathon you know if your business succeeds and you're lucky enough to get it to succeed um then this is a really long haul and it will as i said it will always be hard like it, i don't think it ever gets easy the challenges won't disappear they'll just change and so you have to look after yourself and it's so easy to say i don't have time but you don't have time not to look after yourself either you need that energy you need that clarity you need that headspace that sense of calm to make really 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 good decisions and certainly for me like there have been periods where i feel so under pressure so busy that you just all those good habits go out the window and you feel rubbish and you're not as good at your job i don't think often as a result um there's often a reason the kind of weirdest and wackiest trends i think come out of silicon valley um So I think I would just really encourage people to know that what you eat has such a big impact on your energy, you know, or keeping your immune system working really well. And again, like you're probably going to be fighting quite a lot of stress. And so bringing in stress management and like actively trying to find some calm in your life, it's it's so important. And it's so easy to dismiss all of this as woo woo and not important. And yes, obviously it's very important to to know what your cash position is and manage your P&L and like all of the practical stuff, but equally you have to keep leading people and you have to keep um yeah having all the answers and having all the energy and so to do that you have to look after yourself um and don't put yourself always at the bottom of the pile like make sure you make space for it because you'll just burn out time and time and time again otherwise it's a brilliant brilliant answer in two parts as well which is excellent for editing purposes (laughs) ella thanks so much it's been fascinating chatting to you Oh, well, no, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Sorry for that brief interlude in the middle. It's from life. There. It's what it's all about. Thank you. It's life. Exactly.